Hello everybody, this is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347, and today we're going to be looking at one of the most fundamental concepts for your CCNA and possibly even NP studies, and that's PPP authentication. Now PPP, as you probably know from your studies, is the point-to-point -point protocol, and it is a layer 2 protocol designed to run on point-to-point -point links, as the name implies. So with uh, PPP, sometimes it's necessary either in the lab, on a test, or in the real world to go ahead and implement some sort of security on that point-to-point -point link. And PPP authentication is how we go about achieving that goal. PPP authentication basically says, I am not going to allow this serial link to come up, this point-to-point -point link. We're not going to allow it to come up until the other side authenticates and tells me who he is. When we talk about PPP authentication, there's generally two things or two different ways to do it. There's PAP and there's CHAP, two different protocols, two different ways to do the same thing. Basic difference is that PAP, we have a, a plain text authentication mechanism, and with CHAP, we go ahead and add in a little bit of encryption. If you're going to be using CHAP, you'll never actually send the password over the line in plain text. You're going to use an MD5 hash. Whereas with PAP, everything's sent in the clear. So in the unlikely event that uh, somebody's listening in on your private serial lines, they're going to be able to sniff your usernames and passwords. So let's get into PAP. We're going to go ahead and configure PAP in this video between Router 7 and Router 8. And we'll look at configuring CHAP in a video down the line here. So what the goal is going to be here is we want router 7 to go ahead and authenticate router 8 on this serial link. So you could call router 7 maybe the, the server end and router 8 the client end. We'll go ahead and get started on router 7. So here we are on router 7 and we'll go ahead and enter enable mode first thing we need to do is we need to set up in router 7's local user database some sort of username and password for router 8 to use so that it can authenticate properly. So we're going to go ahead and say username router 8 password Cisco. So that is the username and password the other end of this link is going to have to use to authenticate the line. Now we're going to go into our serial link, which is going to be serial 00, and I'm going to say PPP authentication PAP. What that command there does is it tells router 7, go ahead and initiate the authentication mechanism. When I bring up this line, go ahead and tell router 8 that he needs to authenticate in order to bring this line up successfully. Now that's really all we need to do here on the server end. Let's go over to the client. Now on the client end, this topic's a little bit confusing for some people because in a lot of Cisco documentation and even classes, they go ahead and tell you to go into the interface and also do a PPP authentication PAP. Now we're not going to do that here. Remember what I said. This command just tells the router to go ahead and initiate the authentication. If we were to put it here on router 8, we'd be doing bidirectional authentication. So router 7 would be trying to authenticate router 8, and router 8 would also authenticate router 7. You can do it that way, perfectly fine. It's done a lot of times, but you don't have to. To keep things simple, we're going to go ahead and leave that off. The only thing we need to do here is say PPP authentication, or sorry, PPP PAP sent username r8 password cisco so that just says when the other end prompts me for authentication i'm going to send a username of r8 and a password of cisco and that's going to go ahead and match the credentials i set up on the other end so let's enter that command now as we bring this line up we're going to go ahead and take a look at the debugs so we're going to say debug ppp authentication on router 8 and on router 7 debug PPP authentication 
Now right now these serial lines are down. So we're going to have to go ahead and bring these up. Let's go back to global config mode, to the serial interface, and do a no shutdown. We'll do the same thing over here. And pop over to router 7. You see the line came up. And we can ping the other side. Let's go through these debugs real quick. So starting on router 7, the first thing we we're really concerned with here is we're sending a PAP login request. We're actually right here. We're authenticating peer router 8. We're going to send the PAP login request. Here we receive the response and the response is accepted and we have a successful authentication. We can see that because the line protocol here comes up, meaning PPP is working. Now on the other end, here we see that authentication is required and here we are going to send the username and password that we set up with the PPP PAP sent username command on the serial interface. Right here we have an outbound PPP connection. That's what the capital O there is. So it's saying we're sending a host name of router 8. And right here, incoming connection, that's where router 7 is telling us that we've passed the authentication and the line comes up. So that's really all there is to uh, basic PPP PAP authentication. Like I said, you can do it uh, bi-directionally. So if we wanted, we could add PPP authentication PAP on the router 8 side, and we would also have to add a username and password on the router 8 side. And on the router 7 side, on the interface, we would say something like PPP PAP sent username r7 password cisco or whatever you want it to be but this is the most basic way to do it hope that's informative for you guys and uh, until next time keep studying hard we'll take a look at chap next